Hey, Pastor Sean here. We just want to thank you for joining our live service. It's going to start here in a few minutes. I know that God's going to do something great in your life today, so stay tuned with us and get ready. church in the city. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. I'm pulling it up now so I can see who all is watching. I just created the, the cardinal sin and had my phone volume up. Good evening, Jessica Joseph, Miss Betty, Jackie, J-Lo, Elder Lockhart. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. We are doing our Wednesday night equip you with Pastor Senior Pastor Michael Hankins speaking. Brother Sandy Bates will be leading worship tonight, so you'll see him in just a second. Before we get started, a few announcements, and I'm going to pray for us. You can always follow any of our services on Facebook, YouTube. They are now live on Periscope, which is through Twitter. And they are also now on Instagram, but be patient on the Instagram. We're tweaking the video a little bit. Sometimes it works out great. Sometimes you see an arm or a leg, but we're working on that. Also, hi, Miss Darla Diaz, Miss Barbara, Mark, Mamaka, Ty Dester, love you. Thank you guys for joining us. If, if you're joining or as you're joining us, go ahead and share it uh, on Facebook. Xavier, love you and your family. Y'all are amazing. Just share it right now for us. Comment on us. Comment on it. Tell us where you're watching from. If you're watching from Garland, Rowlett, Saxe, Dallas, Mesquite, Fate. Roy City, wherever you're watching from, uh, South Africa, I don't care, wherever you watch from, just let us know. We love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's go ahead and pray tonight. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you that no matter what is going on, no matter what the storms, no matter what the trials are around us, that you are still the same. You are still our rock. You are still our foundation. We thank you that you are not changing. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you that you are always with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. Your promises never change no matter what the, is going on around us. We thank you that your goodness and your mercy pursue us all the days of our lives. We give you this time tonight. We say thank you for your presence. I thank you that your presence goes forth between the internet and whoever's watching, I thank you that even now people are feeling it in their homes. Even now people are feeling it in their cars or at work, wherever they are, Father. I thank you that there is no distance in the realm of the Spirit. I thank you that even tonight as Pastor brings the word that people are being set free. People are being healed. People are getting provision. We thank you for these things. We thank you for people coming to know Jesus tonight. We give you tonight in Jesus' name. Brother Sandy.
Hallelujah. you to share this experience tonight online. Let's worship together. It's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break. This broken hearts declare His praise. Who can stop Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah, who's roaring with power and fighting our battle. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is a lamb, the lamb that was slain, the sins of the world. Blood breaks a chain And every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Every knee will bow before him So open up the gate Make way before the king of kings Our God who comes to save is here to set the captive free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battle. Never need to bow before him. Our God is a lamb. The sins of the world His blood breaks the chain Never knee will bow before the lion and the lamb Every knee will bow before him oh, 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 oh. Magnify you tonight You're so worthy who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop you from watching online? You can sing it with me now. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battle. Never need will bow before him. God is a lamb, lamb that was slain. The sins of the world, his blood breaks a chain. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every knee will bow before him. Oh, 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 oh. How many knows that hope is built and nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness? Righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame. 
a holy trust in Jesus' name. My hope, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, we made strong and save us alone through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor. in his righteousness alone for let's stand before the throne hallelujah oh and you alone and you alone yeah. oh worship him right now yeah. for he alone is worthy he alone is worthy yeah. he alone worthy
Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord Lord of all If you're watching right now, sing it again Christ alone Cornerstone Weak made strong The Savior's love oh, He is beautiful and worthy tonight Right where you are He sees you right where you are Oh Christ alone I place my trust And find my glory in the power of the cross In every victory Let it be said of me Oh, my source of strength Source of hope is Christ alone. Source of strength. Source of hope is Christ alone. Christ alone. I place my trust. I find my glory in the power of the cross in every victory let it be said of me source of strength is my source of hope is my source of strength Source of hope, oh, I know what I'm going through, my source of strength. Source of hope, you can sing it, my source of strength. Source of hope, he's a way maker, he's a problem solver. Oh, you make a way where the sins have been away. He's a COVID-19 destroyer. He's a COVID-19 destroyer. He's a COVID-19 destroyer. Nothing can stop this mighty force of his power. He's moving this hour. Can you feel him? Can you feel the spirit? Can you feel the spirit moving? Yeah. So he's my source of strength. Oh, Christ died for us, gave himself for us that we might become new creatures in Christ Jesus. It's a new day in your life if you're a child. We're all in a in a new time a new experience right now with doing live stream or to be together and spend time together we are restricting ourselves we have just a skeleton crew here tonight to help us do this live stream service so we're glad that you are watching at home i we trying to get ourselves uh organized here to to be able to do this and we've already mentioned uh, elder Barbara Roofing is watching. Elders Bill and Linda Lockhart are watching. And, and uh, mine and Pastor Vicki's executive assistant, Gail Lester, is watching. And her husband, Mike. And um, Quilici, or Qu I'm sorry if I'm not saying it right. I'll just say Q. Q, Battle is watching at work. Thank you for joining us tonight on live stream. And um, a whole bunch of others as well. Uh, Q, I think you may be the the the, uh, the person I met in Costco that day, because I remember your name.
for me to pronounce was a little bit of a challenge, and you uh, laughed at me and said, don't worry about it, but I'm pretty sure that was you. And uh, let's see, Jeanette Shields and uh, Jason Mills and Ken Roofing, Elder Ken Roofing and Maria Chavez and Donna White and Cornelia Lincoln and Shirley Knuckles and Marilyn Lane. I imagine Ed's right there close with Marilyn. Tammy uh, Plyler is watching. Greg Gonzalez and Elder Pastor Carol Trailer is watching. Xavier Gomez is watching. Jessica Joseph, Jennifer Lopez, and there's actually even some more who are watching as well. So welcome. Welcome to live stream tonight, and uh, we're glad that you're joining us here. So we're going to go to the Word right now, and I'm going to invite you to, to turn to Psalm 91. I finally have uh, broken myself from the habit of saying, turn in your Bibles to Psalm 91, because it finally dawned on my 50-something-year-old brain one day, where else are you going to find Psalm 91 except only in your Bible? So I've stopped using that phrase. So turn to Psalm 91, and we're going to read Psalm 91. I'm going to read it aloud to, with you in the New King James Version of Scripture. Several years ago, we all, during a time of praying and fasting, we all as a church uh, memorized Psalm 91, and uh, we... Uh, have continued to to uh, to know it. I memorized it as a child, so quite a few in our church memorized it with me. So some of you just can quote it uh, aloud together with me tonight. So Psalm 91, New King James Version. Here we go. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord... He is my refuge, my fortress, and my God. In him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways in their hands. They shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you this evening, and we ask right now, according to the prayers that the Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians 1, Ephesians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1. We pray and ask that you would open the eyes of our understanding, that you would grant to every one of us tonight that are watching by live stream and those that will be watching later through our archives and be able to watch it later, that you would grant to us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus the eyes of our heart to be flooded with light, that we will know what is the hope of our calling. Lord, that we'll know why we were born. We'll know why we're on planet Earth. We'll know why that you called us. We'll know why you saved us. We'll, we will not only begin to get an understanding of the purpose of your purpose for our lives, but Lord, we will also begin to pursue that purpose harder than ever before. And I thank you, Lord, this evening that you will do that for us as we study your word. 
you're helping us tonight to take it to take at least one step, one step in the in the way of discipleship as a believer, one way in, in, into into fresh areas of discipleship in our lives. We're going to see something we've not seen before from your word. We're going to hear something tonight that we've not heard before from your word. And as we do so, we are going to take that to heart. Then we're going to take it down and let it begin to direct our steps. So in Jesus' name, we declare that. And everybody said amen. Amen. This evening in looking at this particular passage, and I did, we did this last Wednesday as well. Last Wednesday we were able to have a, um, a group of us here. So we had some of us here last Wednesday, and I got this started. And so uh, I'm going to review quickly, and then we're going we're gonna to pick up where I left off last Wednesday. And this, this particular passage is, of, of Psalm 91 is what I'm going to be, be uh, dealing with. My title for Wednesday nights has been, has been the triumphant church in tough times. The triumphant church in tough times. And these are some tough times right now with what's going on, not just in the United States of America, but what's going on globally with this plague that is threatening the lives of, of every American citizen. It's threatening the lives of every person in the world at the moment. So we're needing God's help, and then we, all of us, are needing an infusion of the Word of God into our very spirit, our heart, and then to allow it to dwell in our mind and, and, and upgrade in our thinking. So Verse 1 of Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. That's where I stopped. So I'm going to go down here and go back to, to talking concerning dwelling. We talked about a dwelling place. That particular thing talks about a habitation. It talks about a place where you, you hang out. I ran across another curious word that's defined in, uh, in Hebrew for the word dwell. It means to lurk, to always be lurking about, to always be there, always be there because you belong there. He who dwells, he who dwells. The next thing it talks about in the secret place, in the secret place, it talks about that place where we have a covering it talks about a hiding place, a place of protection, and a place where we belong, knowing that there is a secret place that God has prepared for us, his children. We belong there. The next thing, it talks about the most high. The most high. In other words, that lofty place where, the, where our God lives, that we belong there. New Testament says to us as believers that we have been, past tense verb, we have been seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I had a uh, preacher, a uh, friend of mine many, many, many years ago who, who kept saying to me constantly every time he'd see me, whenever we would depart together, he would always say, well, Mike, keep looking up. So finally one day I got, I, I, I worked up the boldness to, to reply to him. When he said to me, keep looking up, I just looked back at him and I said, he, I said, no, I'm looking down. And he got a quizzical look on his face. What do you mean you're looking down? And I said, quite simply, scripture says that I have been seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So I'm, I'm looking down. I'm not looking up. I am seated in heavenly places. And then I do know some smart aleck theologians that say, well, he's He's talking about that positionally. Well, guess what? That's my position. I have been seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So scripture says that. So we've been seated there with the most high. The next thing that goes on, it says that we abide. We abide under the shadow. It's kind of a repeat word, a synonym of the word dwell. We're abiding there. We're staying permanently. We have a right to be there. We're going to continue there. We're going to be there. We're going to, we're going to stay there. We're going to lodge there. We're going to remain there. 
Why? Because there is the place where we belong. Under the shadow, under the shadow of the Almighty, we belong under the covering of the Lord. And then he goes on down, talks about the Almighty, which is one of the names of God in the Old Testament that I talked about last week. And then it says, he will say of the Lord. In other words, our declaration is what we begin to say. Over the years, over the last, I would say, this being 2020, uh, more than 50 years, I would say particularly for the last 60 years, there was, there was a word that got released in, our, in, in, in the United States of America that got labeled and called the word of faith. The Lord used Dr. Kenneth E. Hagan Sr., and he began to preach the word. He went from church to church to church preaching the word. And he began to begin to talk about the Word of God. He began to talk about confessing the Word of God. And he taught it from what the Word of God says. And so here it says, we shall say of the Lord. There is a, there is a proper place that we have to say of the Lord. Say of the Lord and begin to declare who He is. And so last Wednesday night, we looked through some of the prominent Old Testament names of God. I went through several of them with you, and I'm not going to repeat those tonight. Most of you know uh, what those are. I'm not going to define them again. But we know one thing I am going to say is that the name Jehovah for God comes from the Hebrew letters Y-H-W-H, that's the English rendition of the Hebrew, of the Hebrew word, Y-H-W-H, which quite often is pronounced Yahweh. Yahweh. Vowels can differ, but Yahweh is how it's mostly said. And that stands for the name Jehovah. And Jehovah is the covenant name of God. Jehovah is the covenant name of God. There are other names that tell us about God in Scripture. But when you go down through the covenant names of God, as we do quite often as we pray here at church, uh, is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nissi, Jehovah Makedish, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Sidkenu, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah Shema, Jehovah Saboath, etc., etc. As we begin to pray those names, those are names of the covenant God that we have. God established a covenant with His people Israel, and then through Jesus Christ, He, he in Jesus' redemption on the cross of Calvary, we have been grafted in. We Gentiles have been grafted in, and we now have a new covenant that's been written in the blood of Jesus that's established on better promises. So that's what belongs to the people of God. And so it's established who is the Lord. Now tonight, I'm going to go past. There are other names of God that I, that I uh, uh, passed over but simply just for the sake of time. But tonight, I want to go to some names of Jesus in Scripture. I want to go to, to some names of Jesus, what Scripture says, says about the names of Jesus. And we're looking at it from, from the English language. Uh, there's a lot of many languages in the world. Pastor Sonny Daniel and I did a, um, did a, a 11 a.m. broadcast today or a live stream today on faith every day. We're doing an 11 a.m. Uh, live stream on faith and studying the Word of God every day. We've done it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday today. We'll do it again tomorrow at 11, Friday at 11, and again Saturday morning at 11. And then we are, have been having noon prayer every day this week, and we will have noon prayer tomorrow at, at 12. And uh, same thing on, on Friday and on Saturday. And then, of course, there will be Sunday. Right now, we are doing everything by live stream, and so I encourage you to, to get on live stream with us, and some of you are joining us right now. So as you join us, please let us know where you're joining us from, and please uh, uh, let us know wh where you're from and uh, that, you're, that you're watching and what, what town you're from. Uh, please, that would help us a lot. And then also, if you can uh, post it on your page. And uh, if you would, uh, what are they, what's that called? Share. 
share. If you would share it on your page, that will help increase the viewership for us. If you'll just do that on your page and just click over and put it there, that would be extremely helpful for those who watch. What else do I need to say? I'm getting assistance here. I need assistance when it comes to tech. We're all learning through this process, and it'll, like you've said, it'll take us a little bit to get used to everything. So Dr. Connie messages us on YouTube to make sure that you knew people were watching on YouTube. So that's, we were trying to run around figuring out a solution back there, and we figured it out. So Dr. Connie, thank you for making us aware of that so that Pastor can now see that people are watching on YouTube as well. So Pastor, I'll be going back and forth between YouTube and uh, Facebook so you can see who's watching and who's commenting. So uh, Elders Jack and Katie are watching on YouTube. Constance is watching in McKinney. Dr. Connie is obviously watching, so thank you guys for tuning in. But yeah, share it, uh, and always stay tuned. You can also go on to Twitter, and if follow us on everything. It helps us. It helps us get around the algorithms that Facebook and uh, YouTube and all these other places, these platforms set, and it helps us get it out to more people. So follow us on Twitter. That's Periscope is who Twitter uses, and then, again, YouTube and uh, Facebook. Okay. Thank you, Pastor Sean, and uh, I have a hard time keeping up with all of the information, but thank you, and thank everybody for for watching, and those watching on YouTube, uh, that's coming through our website, is that correct? Are they just gone to YouTube? Both. Both. Yeah, you can just go to YouTube and watch it. So, now back to the Word of God. Whatever we do in life, I believe you and I have to ultimately come to a place of confidence, have to come to a place of confidence. With what we're dealing with now, we have to deal with it from a place of confidence. One of the things that I have repeatedly said to, to our congregation and to said it to anybody, you, that you do need to take the precautions that you deem to be necessary for yourself because that's your responsibility for yourself. And you need to do so. And so whatever, any, whatever anybody is doing with regard to this, this coronavirus, whatever you're doing, you've got to do it with confidence and in confidence. But I want you to show you a verse of Scripture that hopefully will help all of us here tonight. It's found in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. And if you don't have your Bible handy, uh, I encourage you to get your Bible handy. I, are, are the scriptures going up on the on the on the uh, live stream? Thumbs up. Yes. Okay. The scriptures are going up on the live stream. Good. Uh, we are working on our capabilities to listen. We are not a broadcast media church. We w- yet we started into doing live stream right after the tornado. Uh, I don't remember exactly how quickly, but we, we started doing, so we've been doing live stream three plus years. And, um, and uh, one of our motivations it was, was in order for us to get the word to elders Andy and May Davis at their house because they weren't able to be here. And then we had some others who weren't able to be here as well. So that kind of got us started. So now we're trying to upgrade everything. And I just give you a good praise report. Uh, Sunday, those of you who were at home endeavoring to try to see us on live stream realized we had a something more than a hiccup. We, it, uh, you know, I don't know how long hiccups last, but we had more of a conniption fit that lasted an hour, and uh, we had a technical problem back in our booth, and it, and, and, and so. Uh, it took an hour to sort it out and figure it out, so we weren't able to be on live, but we finally got on there. So I happened to mention again uh, concerning the need to upgrade our equipment, and just to give you a praise report, uh, we we have had people get, give toward that. So the money's come in not just for the camera, but also come in so we can get a new computer because Sunday the problem was with the computer. Even our computer back there uh, is is several years old, and so that was the problem on Sunday. So we, we've had the money given, and so by the grace of God, we're going to be able to get everything upgraded here as quickly as possible so we can bring a much better picture to you because this camera is is old and it is um, uh, probably nobody using it in the United States now except us. That's probably the only camera like this that's still in existence at church in the city. So uh, 
but we're going to put it out on display out here in the hall so you can see a relic uh, after we after we get the new one. I, I'm joking about that. We ought to start a museum of old stuff and just put it out here, and uh, we show, we're going to show you some old stuff. Ah, oh, but you know what? Inside, we're all refreshed and renewed and looking good in here, by the way. For those of you that haven't been able to be here since the, uh, we did the restoration after the tornado. So a lot of things are looking better in here, but we're fixing to get much better back there. And I want to thank you. I, had a, I was on the phone today with somebody who's going who's gonna to give also to help us back there upgrade. So uh, I, I thank you so very much uh, for giving. So... Being able to do what we need to do, and we're working on on this as well, because this is all new for me, uh, concerning uh, seeing who all's on and who's uh, uh, watching and stuff. That's kind of a new thing. Get back to confidence. Confidence. First John five verse fourteen fifteen. The the words will be on the will be on uh, your uh, screen. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to his will. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Confidence. Everything in life begins with confidence. It, I, I don't care what you're doing, what you're doing. I had four children, and I got the privilege of being able to watch them grow up hopefully help them grow up. I remember watching them learn to walk, watching them learn to ride a bicycle, helping them to ride a bicycle. I ran down the street with my hand on the seat so they wouldn't tip over once they got off of the, the training wheels and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, but I can, you can still see the spark in their eyes once they, they developed their confidence and they were like, yes, I can do this. I can ride that bicycle. Yes, I can get up and I can walk without falling down. I still remember confidence affects everything in your life. It affects your prayer life particularly. Very important that when we pray, that we pray in confidence. And he gives right here the qualifications of praying in confidence. That if we ask anything according to his will, his word is his will. Let me say it again. His word is his will. His written word is his will. That's why I always encourage people to pray the word. Pray the word. Don't pray your problems. Don't pray the circumstances, but pray the word. Pray the promises of God and begin to pray because if we pray according to his will, he hears us. Notice this. And if we know that he hears us, how do we get rid of the if? We get rid of the if by praying the word. We get, the, get rid of the if by praying his will. And if we know we prayed his will and we prayed the word, then we immediately know that he hears us. Now notice this. He says here, whatever we ask, whatever we ask, He's, he doesn't qualify this right here by saying you've got to ask this or ask this. He said whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. So as we are looking at this tonight and we're looking at the name of the Lord and we're looking tonight in particular the name of Jesus, it is vitally important that we know that this is all being declared to you tonight in order to build your confidence, to build your confidence that before you go to bed tonight, you're going to know. You're going to know that you're right with God. You're going to know that if you died and you sleep, you're going to heaven. You're going to know that the angels of the Lord encamp around about your house, your home, your vehicle. The angels of the Lord encamp around about you as you go to the grocery store. The angels of the Lord encamp around about you wherever you have to go tomorrow. Because we have learned here at Church in the City that we are going to keep ourselves in the love of God and we're going to keep ourselves in the will of God. So we're not going to do anything tomorrow that's, that's outside the bounds of His Word or outside the bounds of His will for our life. Because we seek Him first, and as He leads us with our daily activities, that's how we're going to follow. So, done in the name of Jesus. Now, turn to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, 
Verse 5, I'll give you a moment to find it, and it's going to be up on, the, on, the, on your screen in just a moment. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. If you have a Bible, I highly encourage you to mark it. You can mark these uh, iPad Bibles now and the Bible on your phone. You, they've, they've got all sorts of highlighters and underliners that you can highlight your Bibles now. If you're using a paper Bible still, you can do it there too. Very much encourage you. Philippians chapter 2, I'm going to begin with verse 5. And we're going to read through verse 11. Philippians 2, verse 5 through verse 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The name of Jesus, that name that is above every name, that name that is above every name. Jesus said this, whatever we ask the Father in his name, he will give it to us. And then it further was qualified by whatever we ask in his will, he gives to us. So we're learning to pray in the name of Jesus. We're learning to ask according to the word of God. We're learning to follow the leadership of God, the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus said has been sent that he can lead us and guide us into all truth. And he's the one who teaches us all things concerning the word. Now, I want you to look in Ephesians chapter 1. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1. You say, Pastor, there you go again. You're just reading a lot of Scripture. Well, you betcha, to quote some uh, northerner. You betcha. Yes, I am going to give you the Word. I'm going to give you the Word. Heaven and earth will pass away. You'll forget what I said. Sometimes I have people say that they remember my stories. I'd rather you remember the Word of God that I read. I would prefer that you would know the Word because the Word of God you can take to the bank. The Word of God is what is what's going to sustain you, not my stories, even though they can be cute and funny, but it's the Word that's going to sustain you. So Ephesians chapter 1, verses 21 through 23, is this is part of the prayer the Apostle Paul prayed in Ephesians 1 that begins somewhere around verse 17, but I'm going to pick up at verse 21. And he's talking here about Jesus in the name of Jesus. It says, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he, Jesus, put all things under his feet Jesus' feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. In other words, here you see it again. That name that is named above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age that is to come. And then I want you to turn to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. I'm going to read this. Acts 4, verses 5 through 12, because this establishes the power in the name of Jesus. It establishes the priority of the name of Jesus. It, it helps us begin to see how powerfully important it is to pray in the name of Jesus. I don't know exactly when I started paying attention to what's going on in our world more so than in my life raising kids. I guess it was probably around about the time that I began to seek the will of God that, that uh, eventually uh, led me to move up to Dallas area in 1988. But in becoming pastor of this church, one of the things that I began to notice then was 
how there was a diminishing of calling on the name of Jesus. That those that are in leadership and in those that were serving in our nation, quite often, whether it be from the uh, national level to the state level or to the local level, the name of Jesus got suppressed. That the only name that was mentioned, they would mention God, but they would never define who God, who God is. And they would just use it as a generic term. But the name of Jesus wasn't used hardly at all. But I want to say this about the city of Rowlett in which our church is located is that I, the, uh, at a recent city council meeting, well, this, this uh, year I've prayed twice at city council meetings, and the city of Rowlett encourages us to pray in the name of Jesus. And so I was able to go and lead the city council in prayer, praying in the name of Jesus. Thank God for that. Uh, Pastor Larry Trailer posted on his page uh, yesterday or the day before a prayer of a congressman from the state of Texas who was leading in prayer, and he was praying in the name of Jesus, and he was he was asking God to forgive the sins the sins of this nation, and uh, I, and I said to myself, praise God. I also said that's a good start. That's a good start. In other words, we're just getting started with what we need to deal with here nationally. But it begins with the name of Jesus, with the name of Jesus. And then I observed in probably the last 20 years or so that we got to where we weren't even praying at all, but they were having silent prayers. Let me just tell you, there is no such thing as a silent prayer. The, the word prayer means to open your mouth and say something. That's what the word means. So there's no such thing as a silent prayer. There is silence, but silence and praying don't go hand in hand. Praying is opening your mouth and talking to God and talking to him in the name of Jesus. So I believe that Romans 8, 28 is true, and this situation we're in is going to work itself together for our good. It's going to work itself together for our good. And one of those things is calling on the name of Jesus, calling on the name of Jesus. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's true tonight for anybody who's watching on live stream. But Acts chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. I'm going to read that to you again. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other. Many Christians are too ashamed or too embarrassed or too whatever to, to, to stand up and say there is no other name. There is no other name. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And he is referring to the name of Jesus. So in looking at these, at these names of Jesus here tonight, I'm going to go through some of them. I'm not going to get through all of them, but I'm going to get started. And I hope you're taking notes and writing down some of these references I'm going to give you tonight because they become very important. These are are words and names and titles of Jesus that are used in the New Testament. And every one of them is unique. Every one of them is significant. And every one of them 
bears a difference from the next one that I'm going to give you. Because there comes a time in all of our lives that there are different revelations or different aspects or different things of the character of God and the character of Jesus that we need at a certain time in our lives. So this evening, I want, we're going to begin, and I'm going to do it alphabetically. I'm going to do it alphabetically so it's easy for you to, to, to keep up with. The first, the first name of Jesus that's found, and you can look this up in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. 1 John 2, verse 1, it is the word advocate, advocate, advocate. 1 John 2, 1 says this. I'm going to read it to you. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Another synonym for the word advocate is lawyer. We have a lawyer in heaven. We have an attorney in heaven. We have an advocate in heaven who the scripture says he pleads our case. He pleads our case before the Father. Scripture also tells us that there is an accuser of the brethren in heaven that we know to be Lucifer, we know to be Satan, we know to be Beelzebub, we know to be that, that old slew foot himself that he accuses us, Scripture tells us, night and day before God. He accuses us based upon our past. He accuses us based upon some of our habits. He accuses us night and day. But Scripture tells us we have an advocate, Christ Jesus the righteous. And so if you ever, I don't know if you've ever needed a lawyer, but I'm going to tell you when it comes to the devil's accusations, you need an attorney. You need a lawyer. But guess what? You have a lawyer. You have a lawyer, and his name is Jesus. He is your advocate. The next word we're going to look at tonight is the word almighty. Almighty. Turn to Revelation. Revelation of John chapter 1, verse 8. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8. Almighty. Almighty. Revelation 1, verse 8 says this. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Jesus being defined in the Word of God as the Almighty. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Almighty. We've all known uh, humans and people that have uh, been very impressive as a human in our world, but, you know, their almightiness doesn't last a long time. They, they come to pass. We're all going to come to pass. If Jesus tarries, we're all going to pass. We're all going to pass. If the rapture occurs before we pass, then praise the Lord. But otherwise, we're all going to pass all going to pass. I hear every day of people who have passed on from this life, and uh, it happens. But you know what? We have an Almighty, and His name is Jesus. And our Almighty Jesus was crucified on a cross. They 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 killed Him. He died on a cross. He was buried in a tomb. Scripture tells us that it, during the time He was in that tomb, He went to hell. The verse of tells us that he led captivity captive and he came back and he brought gifts to men. In other words, in hell, Jesus defeated the enemy in hell. He defeated him on his own turf. So he is qualified to be the one and only Almighty. The one and only Almighty. The one and only Almighty is Jesus Christ of, of Nazareth. Also in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 is the next name of Jesus. And that name is Alpha. And again, I'm going in alphabetical order. Alpha. I am the Alpha. In other words, I am the beginning. I am the beginning. I am the Alpha. So Jesus was there in the beginning. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, the name for God in that particular verse is the word Elohim, which is a reference to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, who were together during and in creation. Alpha. 
The next name for Jesus, again, alphabetically, is the word amen. I bet you didn't know that one, that his name is called amen. Turn to Revelation. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 14. Revelation 3 and verse 14, which reads this way. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. These things says the Amen. Jesus is our Amen. So now that changes your whole saying of the word Amen. Now you'll Amen more in church because now you're referring to Jesus. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is our eternal amen. The next word I'm going to go to is the word apostle. Apostle, apostle. Hebrews chapter 3. This is the, the apostle that I have my focus and my vision on. The, the word apostle uh, used to have extremely uh, specific meaning for lots of for, for, for folk, but it's gotten to be used so much now that, uh, that now it's lost its meaning because there's so many self-appointed and self-anointed people who call themselves apostles. And so, uh, but here we're going to go with the apostle Hebrews chapter three, verse one, Hebrews three, verse one. I want you to see this it says this, therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. I'll read that to you again. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and the high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. That Jesus is the apostle. He is the sent one, sent from the Father, to come and do the will of the Father. He's the sent one. So he is the ultimate apostle, and he is the apostle who never failed his apostleship, who never ever failed in any capacity whatsoever as an apostle, but it is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The next one, found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Turn to Hebrews 12 and verse 2. This is a little bit longer name, but it is author and perfecter of our faith. Author and perfecter of our faith. Hebrews 12 verse 2 says this, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher, our perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. In other words, he's the author of our faith. He's the finisher of our faith. He's the perfecter of our faith. That is Jesus, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus. And when you read the rest of it and you see that he had great joy based upon what was set before him, he knew what was set before him, and he endured it all. And one of the biggest challenges that we have even right now with this going on is some of us are already struggling and we're about maybe 24 hours or 48 hours or 72 hours or four or five days uh, into our struggle and we're already worn out, aggravated, and almost annihilated. But I'm going to tell you right now, Keep your chin up, hold your head up in the name of Jesus. Look beyond the challenges, look beyond. Begin to see the joy that's set before you. When you're walking in the purposes of God, there is joy that's set before you. And you and I have to endure some stuff to get to the end that God has promised. So we're going to walk through this. Psalmist David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He didn't say, I stop and take pictures. Some of y'all taking too many selfies of your troubles, too many selfies of what's going on, too many selfies of this, that, and the other, and, and of all the perils that are going on, and all the challenges going on. I, I uh, went home uh, this afternoon talking to Pastor Vicky, and, and so I'm sure that 
All the other ladies in, in the Dallas area have experienced this too. All your hair appointments have been canceled. You can't get your hair cut. You can't get it fixed. You can't get it washed if you, if you do hair color. Uh, there's fixing to be a great unveiling. We're fixing to have a great apocalypsis at church in the city. <laughs> Hopefully we can have service at least once one time so we can see, see the roots. And we're going to find out what your real hair color is. <laughs> I'm showing mine. I've threatened to go get my hair colored, but I am sure glad I didn't do it because I would look a fright with half grown off hair, uh, you know, with a with a black streak on one side and a white streak on the other. I, I would, uh, I'd probably get called skunk real quick. So I'm just going to tell you, you know, and uh, but everybody's concerned about that, you know. Uh, my wife, uh, you know, she's in, in the category that goes and gets her hair done every week, praise the Lord. And uh, I'm glad that she does it because I've been a proponent of, of uh, my, my wife getting her hair done ever since I uh, first got married and I opposed it once. And, uh, and, um, and I learned a big lesson that day about a lady and her hair. And so uh, since then, I'm all for hair, 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 get it done. You know, we even had a 60 song called Hair. And so that song, we can drag it out right now, Hair, Hair, Long, Beautiful Hair. You know, uh, the Cow Seals, I think it was, sang that song, that bright and shiny, we listened to it the other day. Listen, I'm the, uh, you know, that's the least of your challenges is your, is your hair color. You know, one of the things I tell my wife all the time that she doesn't appreciate is uh, just put a hat on. I said, just put a hat on, just put a hat on. She said, well, that's easy for you to say. And, uh, and so uh, we're going to see a lot of hats in church. Everybody's going to go back to old school and start wearing hats in church. I imagine if the, if the, if the uh, hair salons don't open up. And uh, my hair appointment's been canceled, so my afro may be back here shortly uh, because I'm not going to be able to get my hair cut. My wife <laughs> last night volunteered to get those old clippers out that we had back in, the, in 1970. And I quickly put the quietus on that. I'd rather have big, frightful hair than let her get a hold of my hair again with those clippers. And so uh, we're fixing to see an unveiling of, of all sorts around here. But I'm going to tell you what, it's the least of it. I, I just tell you, this is a good time to grow some patience. This is a good time. Let patience, let patience have, have its perfect work. Let it, let it have its work during this time. So we are walking through this, but Jesus is the finisher and the perfecter of our faith. And the way he did it was the fact he learned to see the joy that was beyond what he was dealing with, able to see it. Revelation 21 verse six, Revelation 21 verse six, he picks up this name, the beginning, the beginning, Revelation 21 verse six. And this is what it says. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus is known as the beginning. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. So he began in the beginning. He was at the beginning. And so he is there for our new beginning. Every one of us had a beginning from birth. And then we all had a new beginning whenever we were born again. The next, the next one is, the, is found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. 1 Peter 2, verse 25. Find that. It says this. The, the name of Jesus here is the Bishop of Souls. The Bishop of Souls. For you were like the sheep going astray. But have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer. One of the words for that is the is bishop, the bishop of your soul. He is the overseer of your soul. Next one, John chapter six, verse thirty-five. Bread of life, bread of life. John six, verse thirty-five. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. 
He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. John 6, 35. John 6, verse 48, he says it again. John 6, 48, I am the bread of life. Hallelujah. And we're going to stop with the B's, uh, with, with B tonight, and we'll continue on next Wednesday night as we begin to delve into these names of Jesus and, and apply these in our life. So if you would turn to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 15. Matthew 9 verse 15 says this, And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn? as long as the bridegroom is with them. But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. In that passage, he calls himself the bridegroom. The church is known as the bride of Christ. Jesus is the bridegroom. We are waiting for the return of the bridegroom to be united with the bride of Christ. That's why Scripture talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb that's in heaven. We're looking forward to that day because He is the bridegroom. He is our bridegroom. So this evening as we're walking through this, I just declare to every one of us that if God be for us, who can be against us? Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. We're always triumphant in Him. And so... I want you to take these, these names that I gave you tonight, and I want you to begin to read about them, look them up more in Scripture, and apply them because they will come in handy at times and points of need in your life that you'll know that Jesus was touched and is touched with everything of our, that has to do with our infirmities. So let's just pray. Father, this evening we thank you. We thank you right now that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Lord, tonight that we can come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain mercy tonight and, and obtain pardon tonight and obtain healing tonight. Father, this evening in the name of Jesus, Lord, we take care of first things first right here. If you are watching a live stream tonight and you have you're in one of three conditions, first of all, you've never, ever publicly confessed Jesus. But you can do so right now, just publicly confess to him as your Lord and Savior with those around you. I'm going to lead you in a prayer in just a moment. Are you watching and you do not, not have assurance of salvation? You can come to know Jesus and have that assurance that when you go to bed tonight, you know that you're a child of God. Or thirdly, if you're in a backslidden condition and you've broken your relationship with the Lord by sin, by other things in your life, you can have that restored tonight in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to ask you to pray this with me right now. Let's pray this together. Say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Right now, I declare that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And now, He is my Savior. I thank you, Lord at the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin and all unrighteousness. I thank you, Lord, that you said that if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new now and forevermore in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you prayed that with me tonight, let us know. You can let us know by sending us a private message on our, on our Church in the City Facebook page. Also, you can do it at citcdallas.com. And I believe you can also do it 
on our Instagram page as well that you can let us know that, you've, that you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I do want to also to let you know concerning giving that, that um, we are still functioning here as a church. It's just taking on a different form for right now. And I thank you for your faithfulness in your giving. And uh, I encourage you with your giving. You can bring your tithe and offering by here. We are here doing our online live stream every day from about 10 until around 1 o'clock. We're, we're here on campus. The uh, we, Things are locked, but if you'll let us know you're coming, and you can do that even on the, uh, on the live stream. Uh, if, if you'll let us know you're coming, I already have somebody that's going to be bringing a a uh, tithe and offering check tomorrow at noon and so it, we had someone today matter of fact we had several folk today come and bring offerings even some yesterday and so if you're a paper check giver like i am i have to give whenever i'm here and that's how i still give but also if you look on your screen you see that you can give by text by by using that text phone number. If you've never given by text, you do need to sign up one time and get it situated. So from then on, you can give by text, but you can also give online at citcdallas.com forward slash giving. And we're just believing God to meet every need this week. We haven't met our budget as yet this week. Last week we did, praise God. But this week we haven't as yet. And, uh, and we're a little bit short, but I'm just going to tell you, I believe that God, the faithfulness of God's people, because I know there are those who haven't been able to give yet. And I do know that there are those who are going to give yet this week. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness now. And I believe every need is met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And, uh, for those of you that are in the situation to where, uh, what the uh, United States Senate voted today to do to be able to help those who are who are uh, in, in our country at certain levels that lost their jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, hopefully that'll go through. The House of Representatives has yet to approve it, but the Senate did get it approved and the president himself has approved it. So, but I do want to say that, that the, uh, the federal government's not going to give any money to your local church. They don't, they don't support churches or, 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 or help us in any shape, form, or fashion um, with, with money. We are considered tax exempt uh, because of the services that we offer to our nation uh, as a church. So, uh, but I just encourage you with your giving to your church even now. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over the tithe and offering of church in the city. And Lord, we pray over the, the uh, financial situation of every covenant member in this house. Lord, we claim the promise of your word that you said you would open windows of heaven and you'd pour out such blessing. There'd not be room enough to receive it and you would rebuke the devourer for our sake that he cannot destroy and he cannot steal from God's people. So I thank you now, Lord, that we recognize that there's only one Jehovah Jireh, and that's you. We recognize God is our source. God is our source. And even though the federal government is going to do what they're going to do, Lord, we look far beyond Washington, D.C. We look to the bank of heaven. And Lord, though there are those of us who don't have a lot of cash in the bank, but Lord, we do have a whole lot of seed in the ground. There are those of us who have laid up a whole lot of treasure in heaven. And Father, I thank you that you said in your word that you would multiply the seed sown and that you would increase the, the fruit of our righteousness, Lord. You would increase it. So I thank you right now for increase. I thank you for your multiplication power. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of faith. Fathers, we, as we began this year, we began to pray about a gift of faith. And I thank you for the supernatural gift of faith to be on this congregation, to be on this people, to be on those who, are, who have been watching on live stream tonight in the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We declare this and we thank you for it right now. And everybody said amen. Amen, 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 amen. Now let's pray for healing. You need healing in your body right now? Lord, in the name of Jesus, I just stretch my hand and I pray for healing. By your stripes we are healed. First Peter 2.24 says, by your stripes we were healed. So in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I speak healing to the church in the city group, to our covenant members, to those watching here tonight that by your stripes we were healed. You're our healer. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over the spirit of fear. Anybody who's in the grip of the spirit of fear, anybody who is being terrorized by the spirit of fear right now. In Jesus' name, I declare that the spirit of faith is forcing out the spirit of fear. But we have the spirit of faith. We believe and therefore we speak. And I thank you, Lord, that every decision that we're making during this time, it is totally governed by the spirit of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we declare it Amen and amen. Pastor Sean, you want to come and, and uh, wrap up and tell everybody what we're going to be doing, and then we will uh, conclude this. Thank you for watching online tonight. Praise God. Yeah, as, as Pastor has been saying, you know, we are going live every day at 11 a.m. from the studio. We were coming live from here at 12 noon for prayer. And we want you to join us for each of those. Join us online, share it with your friends. Let us know if you have any prayer requests for in, in, during any of those times. Also, as pastor's been saying, as the word tells us that faith and fear are opposite of each other. And what did Jesus do when he went into his hometown and he could do no great work because of their unbelief? He went about teaching. So what we're doing every morning at 11 is we are teaching about faith. So don't forget to join us tomorrow at 11 a.m. to hear a faith message to pump you up for the day, to get you full of the word, and to drive you through this period of time where the world is preaching fear to us. So join us in the message of faith. We love you guys. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I saw Lindsay Shekinah hopping on, Miss Victoria Duvall. Uh, there were a bunch of other people hopping on there at the last minute and throughout. Uh, Katrina, thank you for joining us. Miss Lorraine, Xavier, seeing if I miss any. Pastor Vicky, I saw you were on at some point. Who else? Miss Turner. So thank all of you guys. Like I said, share it. Um, do us a favor, go and like us on Twitter as well. If you are a tweeter, is that a correct phrase, Laney? A tweeter? You don't know? Well, we're making it up. Thank you again, Sandy. Thank you, all the guys helping us in the back. Miss Pam, Miss Laney, Mallory, Pastor Larry. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Stay in faith. We hope you enjoyed today's service. You can always rewatch this message on our Facebook and YouTube archives. Download our podcast app to hear other messages like this one. We love you and we hope you have a great week. Follow us on social media at CITC Dallas on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For more information about what's going on in Church in the City, visit our website at CITCDallas.com.